We're talking about Tucker Carlson before we went to break and addressing his head writer getting fired by Fox News by posting racist comments. You asked about Joy Reid. I said she got penalized. Apparently, she did not. She apologized she and she got to keep her job. The, right. I just, that's yeah. what I literally just said. Okay. Can I, what can I, I make also one point will say, about I will cancel answer, culture? Can oh, I just God. finish the question? Let me just answer the question. Do I think that he oh, should okay. get pulled off the air? No, I don't. Because oh. in America, everyone is entitled to have their opinions. But what is not recommended is that we not be racist about what we say. That is my right. bitch with Tucker Carlson. Okay. What did you want to say, Joy? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that, you know, one of the reasons we love this country with all of its flaws is that we have the First Amendment, we have free speech, we have the ability to boycott, we have the ability to speak things that are unpopular, and we also can write things that are unpopular. So there's a difference between canceling people for no reason and, and, and canceling them for a good reason. And there's also a difference between, say, Tom Cotton, who I disagree with vehemently, uh, I believe that he has the right to um, to have an op-ed page in the New York Times. And I read the Hugh Hewitt mm -hmm. and I read uh, Ross Duthat and other conservatives in the New York Times and the Washington Post, and I believe they should be heard. That is correct. They should not be canceled. But when you have a team called the Washington Redskins, which is overtly racist, that is the correct cancellation to change the name because it's offensive and it's incorrect also. Uh, you know, I, I, had, I used to have a joke, they should change it to previous owners because that's the truth of that team. Of, of the American Indian, if you want to call the Native American. I mean, it's so disrespectful. So that that needs to be changed. But uh, it's different from free speech. Let let's just make sure we understand the difference, so that we don't go down some dark road with this. That's all. Yeah. And, and, and can I can I say something also? Yeah. Go I, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I I think we need to reframe the discussion from cancel culture to accountability culture. It's not about canceling people. It's about holding people accountable for their actions. Tucker Carlson, in many ways, has been held accountable for his actions because he's lost many advertisers, including Disney, when he started talking about uh, white supremacy being a hoax. And that is being held accountable for his actions. I suspect that this long-held vacation perhaps is another way of being held accountable for his actions because he ha had another vacation after the white supremacy being a hoax comment. And so instead of saying that this is about a curtailment of free speech, it is not a curtailment of spe free speech. It is about people being able to free, uh, speak freely, but also being held accountable for that speech. Uh, i.e. a boycott. So if you want to be the Goya chairperson and CEO and talk about how fantastic Trump is, knowing Trump's stance on immigration, then there are going to be a lot of immigrants that aren't going to be buying Goya, Sazon, and Adobo products, myself included. I'm not going to buy those products. I am now exercising my free speech, right? And so that is and how that is free as, speech and that, works. Can I, well, can I pivot off something Joy said? That is as American. Yeah, yeah, can I oh, just say Joy that is brought a, it up. Wait. Oh, well, you, you spoke. Uh, now it's my turn, Joy. So you were talking about the New York Times. Right before we came on air, it came out that my friend Barry Weiss is leaving the New York Times. And part of it is the controversy over that Tom Cotton op-ed, which exploded. I'm actually glad to hear that you think that Senator Tom Cotton should have an op-ed in the New York Times. And for those of you that don't know what it is, it was an op-ed he wrote in response to the protests over the country where he advocated for bringing in uh, the Army National Guard. And it created a huge controversy within the New York Times about whether or not that should even be printed at all, whether a sitting senator, by the way, the New York Times has posted uh, op-eds from people like terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and Vladimir Putin, but apparently a sitting Republican senator is bad. She was entangled in it for a lot of different reasons. She's been a target of many people on the left in many different ways, despite the fact that she herself is a liberal Democrat. And she just announced she's stepping down. Now, I haven't read her resignation letter because this is happening in real time, mm -hmm. but I would assume it is because mm -hmm. she's uncomfortable with the kind of attack she's 
receiving internally. So when we're talking about cancel culture, sometimes it's not about, uh, and you make a valid point about racism. No one wants racism on national television that's a rational person. But I think when you are a conservative or someone who is center-right or someone who is saying something that's different, it is just hostile territory in mainstream media. And you are put in a different box, in a different place. And I, for one, I don't want to just be able to watch Fox News. I want to read opinion columns in the New York Times from a diversity of people. And I worry we are going down a slippery slope where we will not have the kind of diversity of opinion that I think all of us celebrate and want on this show. And when I see someone like Barry Weiss, who doesn't feel comfortable with the New York Times, is another dangerous moment in mainstream media where it's one more person with an interesting opinion that we will not have. And I don't think that's good for America. And I certainly don't think that's good for American media. It is not, not good feeling for anybody. Is not the same one as being who has, part has been draw as one has she was has a, she was ostensibly through the mud the New York Times, of Sunday. cancel culture. I can tell you that nobody wants to go through this. Nobody wants to be dragged through the mud because once someone says something about you, that's what people hear. And so I always believe that first you got to hear what everybody has to say, and then you have to decide how you feel. And if you feel like you don't want to buy adobo from Goya, then that's the decision you make. If you decide that you want to write to Barry and say, don't walk away because we need your voice, that's what you should do. But people are entitled in America because that's what makes us different from every other country. We are able to say, I don't like this or I do like that. That is our right as Americans.